as AI progresses, the great promise is that they, they these, these machines alongside of us are able to think and imagine and see things in ways that we never have before, which means that maybe we have some kind of new, weird, seemingly implausible solution to climate change. Maybe we have some radically different approach to dealing with incurable cancers. The real practical uh, and wonderful promise is that machines help us be more creative. And using that creativity, we get to terrific solutions. Solutions that could come unexpectedly to urgent problems. It's gonna change the face of breast cancer. Right now, 40,000 women in the US alone die from breast cancer every single year. Dr. Connie Lehman is head of the Breast Imaging Center at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. We've become so complacent about it, we almost don't think it can really be changed. We, we somehow think we should put all of our energy into chemotherapies to save women with metastatic breast cancer, and yet, you know, when we find it early, we cure it, and we cure it without having the ravages to the body when we diagnose it late. This shows the progression of a small, small spot from one year to the next, and then to the diagnosis of the small cancer here. This is what happened when a woman who had been diagnosed with breast cancer started to ask questions about why it couldn't have been diagnosed earlier. This way, yeah. Really brings a lot of anxiety, and you're asking the questions, you know, am I gonna survive? What's gonna to happen to my son? And I start asking other questions. She was used to asking questions. At MIT's Artificial Intelligence Lab, Professor Regina Barzilay uses deep learning to teach the computer to understand language, as well as read text and data. I was really surprised at the very basic question that I asked my physicians, which were really excellent physicians here at MGH. They couldn't give me answers that I was looking for. She was convinced that if you analyze enough data, from mammograms to diagnostic notes, the computer could predict early stage conditions. If we fast forward from 2012 to 13 to 2014, we then see when Regina was diagnosed because of this spot on her mammogram. Is it possible with more elegant computer applications that we might have identified this spot the year before or even back here. So those are standard prediction problems in machine learning. There is not, nothing special about them. And to my big surprise, none of the technologies that we are developing at MIT, even in the most simple form, doesn't penetrate the hospital. So, Regina and Connie began the slow process of getting access to thousands of mammograms and records from MGH's breast imaging program. So our first foray was just to take all of the patients we had at MGH during a period of time who had had breast surgery for a certain type of high-risk lesion. And uh, we found that most of them didn't really need the surgery. They didn't have cancer, but about 10% did have cancer. With Regina's techniques in deep learning and machine learning, we were able to predict the women that truly needed the surgery and separate out those that really could avoid the unnecessary surgery. What machine can do, it can take hundreds of thousands of images where the outcome is known and then, based on how you know pixels are distributed, what are the very unique patterns that correlate highly with future occurrence of the disease. So instead of using human capacity to kind of recognize pattern, formalize pattern, which is inherently limited by our cognitive capacity and how much we can see and remember, we are providing machine with a lot of data and make it learn this prediction. So we are using technology not only to be better at assessing the breast density, but to get more to the point of what we're trying to predict. Does this woman have a cancer now? And will she develop a cancer in five years? And that's again where the artificial intelligence, machine and deep learning can really help us and our patients.